today dear chess lovers, Soren here and in today's video I want to share with you an amazing game played by Poland born Danish chess player Moises Kupferstich. His opponent is Harry Andreasen and this game was played in 1953 in Copenhagen at a local club tournament. Kupferstich is on the white side and he opened up with e4 to which Andreasen opened up with e5. Knight c3, knight f6, bishop c4. White goes for Vienna game. White is inviting this knight takes e4 move. Uh, now if knight takes e4 then black's idea is to play d5. That's why we have queen h5. This is all theory as you know. Knight d6. Here white can also play queen takes e5 followed by an exchange of queens. And then move back the bishop either on b3 or on e2, but in our game we have bishop b3, which is also a popular continuation. Knight c6, knight b5, trying to get rid of the defender and announce a checkmate, that's why black attacked white queen. Queen goes on f3, still keeping pressure on f7, and knight f5. An alternative is playing f5, a risky and a dynamic move. If queen d5 then queen e7, with which black is sacrificing the rook on a8, and then b6 for example, bishop b7, and black is managing to gain a very nice counterplay. Uh, in our game, after queen f3, we have knight f5, a little bit passive try of course, and meanwhile white keeps on creating problems for his opponent. We have a direct mating threat, black neutralized it, d4, d6, bishop takes h6, here we have this Zwischenzug, queen goes back on f3, bishop takes b3, bishop takes f8, bishop a4, bishop g7, rook g8. This is a mistake. At this point the best move is bishop takes b5, if bishop takes h8 then knight takes d4. And if queen f6, then knight takes c2 check. White now can play king d2, black is winning this rook. Knight f3, we have a more or less forced line, and then after an exchange of uh, queens on f6, king d7, white can uh, win this knight, and uh, the fight goes on. Black has three pawns against a knight. Instead, in our game after bishop g7, we have rook g8. Here comes bishop f6, queen d7, knight a3. This is a passive try, and at this point it was better to make this aggressive castling kingside. And if black accepts the p sacrifice, then d takes e5, and white has a very dangerous attack. This bishop on f6 is paralyzing black's position, right? Uh, instead, we have knight a3. Here comes knight takes d4, queen h3, queen takes h3. At least it was better to play queen f5. Let's see what's the problem with queen takes h3. Knight takes h3, knight takes c2 check, knight takes c2, bishop takes c2, rook c1, bishop e4. Here we first see knight g5, bishop takes g2. So at this point at least it was better to move back the bishop on c6. But I guess black decided first to attack the rook and only then move the bishop back to c6. And so a question arises how to pre proceed. Here white delivered a surprise, yes. Ready? Yes, instead of making rook g1 move, White went for rook takes c7, sacrificing the rook. All black could do was to accept the sacrifice and there came knight takes f6 check. These three pieces are totally paralyzing black's position and are almost creating a mating net around black king. Rook takes c7 is something, right? Bishop d5, knight takes d6 check, king f8, bishop g5. And now the bishop can harass black king from h6. Bishop h6 check is the threat, that's why black freed the g8 square for the king. But anyways, bishop h6 check followed, king g8, rook g7 check, king f8, rook c7 check, king g8. And now question arises, how should white proceed? Here Moises Kupferchik found an ingenious uh, continuation to finish up his opponent. 
Ready? Look, according to Stockfish, here you can win with rook g7 check. Uh, if king f8, then rook takes b7, and then another check, and then rook takes a7. So we have a windmill, right? But yeah, you can't win this rook, it's protected. And then after king f8, you can just play b4 and make use of your post pawn. Black rook can't leave the 8th rank because you can just announce a discover check and then penetrate the 8th rank. And this is how white can win. But the line found by Kupferchik uh, is a more human try, maybe a more beautiful one, and we have knight c8. Here, now you will understand what's the idea behind it. Bishop c6, check, king f8, rook takes b7, check king g8. Rook g7 check, king f8, the pawn on a7 also drops, king g8, and rook takes a8, bishop takes a8, knight d6, black resigned. So first by playing knight c8 and then knight d6, white went for a simplification and then totally paralyzed opponent's position. White is now controlling this essential f7 and f8 squares. Black king can't leave this cage, it's imprisoned together with the rook. This bishop can't do anything, there is no way to kick away these minor pieces. And now white will just make use of his past pawns, will push them forward and will go for a pawn promotion. There is just no defense, you know guys, this is amazing. The position is a very beautiful one, and it actually somewhat reminds me of Ubilava Timoshenko game. Again, in that game, we had a mighty bishop on f6, which was paralyzing opponent's position. Check it out, please. It's also a very nice game, and so we have it at this point. Black resigned. A very very nice combination. I really adored that. Where is that rook takes c7? So yay. Black went for the dubious queen takes h3 and then came after this pawn on g2. So at this point at least it was better to play bishop c6 and play with three minor pieces against a piece. Uh, but yeah, we have this bishop takes g2 in, ho in hope of meeting rook g2 with bishop c6. But yeah, it was in here that white delivered that amazing rook takes c7 move and in a very beautiful style finished up his opponent a very very impressive game and i'm sure yeah that you are also impressed feel free to share with your friends in the end the chess puzzle for you where the task is to win with the white pieces as usual we'll wait for your answer in the comment section be careful please there are some underwater stones you have to take them into consideration once again i'm waiting for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video. Take care.